Hi, I'm Leilani, and welcome to my backyard and to another episode of Leilani Drinks the Brown Stuff. We gonna get into it because we be old school like that. <laughs> and that is a past episode because this was a long time coming. People have been asking me to do this particular whiskey and finally I am getting around to it because there's so many whiskeys and so little time. Uh, so uh, let's get into this. What is it? Buffalo Soldier. Dread like Rasta. Tonight, we are getting into Buffalo Trace Kentucky Straight Bourbon. It is 90 proof. It is 40 per 45 percent ABV. It roughly ran me about 23 bucks at Trader Joe's. Uh, and as I looked at the prices, they'll probably run you right in between 22 to 26 dollars. Now, this whiskey was named after the Buffalo path that was carved for the pioneers and the settlers uh, and that migration path and route that happened to cross over the Kentucky River. Now, they happen to be the oldest, the most award-winning, uh, continuously operated distillery in America. Now, if I can remember correctly, we did an episode, and that's why I'm glad to bring it back to this, where Forrester, who celebrated 150 years last year, ended up stating that they were the one and only that was granted a permit during Prohibition to make whiskey. Now, uh, Buffalo Trace was also granted a permit, but their whiskey was for medicinal purposes. Now, it doesn't matter to me if you call it medicinal. I mean, it's a way of getting around it. It's just like weed that happens to be getting around all the stuff by saying, you know, hey, it helps with hypertension or glycoma or whatever. It's still weed at the end of the day. It, it helps for what it helps. So regardless to me, Buffalo Trace who's been around longer, and even though their permit was for medicinal purposes during Prohibition, they still ended up making whiskey during this time. So Old Forester wasn't actually the only one, although they claimed to be. That's the note. And uh, Buffalo Trace has been around for 200 years. They are American family owned and operated. They're located in like, what was it? Franklin, Franklin County, Kentucky. They use the Kentucky limestone water. And, ooh, what was it? Give me a second. Give me a second. Ah, how could I forget? They're on like 130 acres of land. 130 acres. And the master distiller there is Harlan Wheatley. So without further ado, let's get into this bad boy because we've already talked about Buffalo Trace and we don't need to talk anymore. We needs to drink. Let's get into it. Mm. Oh. oh, sometimes I just don't get it right. Oh, here we go. Oh. That was a little baby corn pop, and it happened so fast. I thought I was going to have to work it out, but I didn't. It was like... <laughs> so easy! I love it! <laughs> All right, guys. Mmm. Woodsy. I feel like I smell a, a slight hint of, like, coconut. Maybe toasted coconut? Right now? With the vanilla and caramel? There's something else, but a hint of tobacco. It's a sweet smoke kind of tobacco. Almost like a cigar. Mmm, let's do this. Let me get this woman's pole on, woman's pole on, woman's pole on. That's enough. Never enough. They lie. Aww, <laughs> I pulled the pop and I pulled the paper. <laughs> All right, guys. 
<laughs> hmm. The smell has all mellowed out. There's a slight layer of like a campfire going on. A little smokiness. Yeah, let's do this. Hints of licorice with the orange. More mellowed out than most of the brand new bourbons. Maybe I need to start getting a decanter. <laughs> Decanting this as I'm talking to y'all. Strong pop at the beginning, but everything else mellows out at the end. So nothing is super prominent, which doesn't make it bad because you know, most of these whiskeys that I tend to find that are mass produced just tend to lean heavy on the orange and doesn't open up and it's just pops, pops. There's a hint of floral that I just got through tasting. I just came through on that last little bit. Gosh, a lot of people love this whiskey because it's been around for so long. So I want to like it so badly. <laughs> I think that's what I'm trying to do. Will my taste buds into liking this buffalo trace? Now, I think I remember liking the white dog. It was interesting and different. Very vanilla forward, if I remember correctly. But this Kentucky straight bourbon, I'm telling you, it's got to be a special bourbon. I've been spoiled, y'all. I've been so spoiled. It's not bad. It's definitely the, the licorice and the floral and the orange is coming through. It has this pop that's right at the beginning of warmth and then it kind of spreads backwards just ever so slightly. But it's definitely not my favorite yet. Maybe I'll open up, but it hasn't yet. Let me swirl it. Maybe that's what people do. <laughs> No. <laughs> I'm just trying to get some air. <laughs> Let's try this one more time. But it's very easy going, so I can see why people like this whiskey um, for Kentucky bourbon at 90 proof. There's just a very few bourbons that seem to rock my socks. Yeah, as much as people talk about Buffalo Trace and how much love they have for it, and for 23 bucks, um, it's not bad. I can see why. I mean, it's a good price point if you're not trying to spend a ton of money on whiskey. But I don't know. I, I think with the local uh, whiskey making that's happening now, instead of the mass produced that are on the shelf, they're offering so many different things. And maybe you are paying like, seven bucks more or you know 10 bucks more 15 bucks more but the flavor profile of what they're doing with bourbons are so fascinating and fun now that it's it, it can be hard to taste like a mass produce and be like it's kind of original and different because they all seem to blend together um so yeah, it's it's mellowed uh, more so than some of the other ones that I've tasted. So uh, let me. <sighs> For a Kentucky straight bourbon, that is great to ask. Thank you, my beast. You are on top of it. <laughs> um, uh, I would say for a Kentucky bourbon starter, if you're trying to find something, it's okay. It's okay. It's not going to kill you to spend the 23 bucks to get it because usually the bourbons are just so pop and then done and kind of like, ah, you know, um, because this is such more mellow, like I was saying, um, I want to say if you want to get into bourbon, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> But if you've definitely been a bourbon drinker and you like your bourbon and you've moved on, this is, mm, I mean, unless it opens up and changes my mind, 
for right now, for what I drank and for what you can taste, it's not the worst thing I've tasted. Uh, I will give this a Buffalo Trace Kentucky Straight Bourbon two and a half kisses because it's all right. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> at the end of the show. Yeah. It's all right. It's all right.